So, uh, we're having uploaded the first video ever, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, just one thing, if you're worrying, those aren't pants. Okay, those, that's that's a jumper. Just what I say. So, I thought something that has been sort of rattling around my mind for quite um, a while now, certainly the last couple of days, is actually this whole question of Scottish independence. And one of the things I think is quite interesting is the fact that the... The vast majority of the opinion of what has been written about this has very much been written from a Scottish perspective. It's quite understandable. And what seems to be coming from the majority of the English side, particularly, um, you know, our national press, you know, the Daily Fail, for example, sad but true, um, is a sort of uh, terrible scare stories, you know, like if Scotland becomes independent, we'll close the border, death to Scots, you know. This is just complete balls, we're not going to do that. But the ideas around Scottish independence and surrounding Scottish independence are actually very interesting. But one thing in particular has sort of um, been uh, sort of wheeling away a mind noodle for the last couple of weeks, which is actually the question of Great Britain. Because Great Britain itself, if Scotland becomes independent, Great Britain will actually cease to function. It simply won't exist anymore, because Great Britain, as a political entity, exists only because of the Act of Union 1707. If you don't have that, if you don't have this Act of Union, then there is no such thing as Great Britain. We will simply go back to the Kingdom of Scotland, as it was, you know, up until that point, and also the Kingdom of England and Wales. Um, well, I think what people have referred to the sort of remainder of the United Kingdom, with Northern Ireland as well. But I do wonder about this, and I do wonder whether the people of Scotland are actually aware of this. Um, I read somewhere that something that was quite interesting was the fact that Alex Salmond has been specifically trying, where possible, to to uh, to not um, actually make any reference to Great Britain when drafting it, because I think he realises that actually, if you say to the people of Scotland, if you do this, Great Britain is destroyed. You know, it, it ceases to exist, it won't exist anymore. There will be no such thing as the British Army, there'll be no such thing as the British Crown, there'll be no such thing as the British Estate. It just it just won't happen. You will have the estates of England and Wales and Northern Ireland and also and Scotland will obviously have everything in its own right. I just get the feeling he's trying to sort of uh, pull a fast one. Now, irrespective of my personal view of Alex Salmon, one cannot deny that he is a brilliant politician. He is an absolutely gifted orator, he's a superb politician. However, my concern is that he is not necessarily being honest with the people of Scotland. Now, wanting independence because you wish to chart your own destiny, because you wish to chart, you know, a path that is different and divergent from people south of the border, you know, makes perfect sense. That's fine. You can understand it why countries would want to do that. I mean, take the example of, you know, Slovakia, Czech Republic, etc. But my other concern, aside from what I see as the destruction of Britain, something that has, you know, survived 300 years, survived Napoleon, survived the First and Second World War, and is now about to be, you know, sort of internally terminated, is also the fact that the narrative that has kind of been constructed by the SNP seems to be one of sort of, we don't like the Tories. Well, that's a poor reason to break up a nation. You know, not liking Conservative government is not, in my own personal opinion, a good enough reason to break up a country that has lasted pretty well for 300 years. In fact, the United Kingdom is the most successful political union there has ever been. It's older than the, than the United States, and it's certainly a lot older than the European Union. You know, there is no union that has lasted this long or has, or has been this successful. So I think trying to break it up purely on that kind of whim-based sort of politics is just rather pointless. The other thing I would say again is, is this idea of, you know, Conservative government. And I've heard um, some people north of the border saying things like, well, we didn't vote for a Conservative government, why should we be ruled by one? And I would just simply make the point to you that the southeast of England didn't vote for a Labour Party for 13 years of government, but we got one. And we didn't then, you know, start talking about succession. Um, were we to do that, of course, the southeast of England would actually become one of the most uh, economically advanced and, by GDP per capita, richest regions in the whole of Europe. So it would certainly be in our interest. But we accept the fact that the majority of the population of the British Isles had voted for a different kind of government than we wanted, and we put up with it. We didn't go out and call for succession. So I think this is a false argument as well. So yes, actually, first long video. I have absolutely no idea how long this is. How long has this been? Four minutes and f oh, five minutes, fantastic. 
Well, somebody said I could speak for England, apparently I can. Um, but I would be very appreciative to hear some thoughts, particularly when I hear some reports, some opinions from those who would call themselves ardent, um, you know, supporters of Scottish independence. Because I think the thing is, as this comes closer and, you know, really I think we should hold it earlier rather than later. I understand Alex Salmon wants to use Bannockburn to kind of um, rev up the sort of pro-independence lot. I can understand that. Again, he's a very talented politician, as I've said. But I would be very interested in hearing from some Scots as to exactly why you think breaking up the union will actually be in your best interests. It can't just be because you don't like the Conservatives. It can't even really be because you don't like the English. There has to be a good reason for it. And I think that there needs to be a much greater discussion of the economic uh, result of breaking up the union. I just don't think Scotland is going to be able to survive. Um, I know that people talk about North Sea oil, but all projections say that's probably only got about 50 years left. So do you really want to, you know, break up a country and potentially put yourself in an economically, you know, precarious situation on the basis of something that may only have 50 years left? may even have less and of course you know oil prices can go up as well as go down so you don't necessarily know that the amount of money you're going to get through it and any country worth its salt must have you know more than one revenue stream. I also think if you look at issues like defence spending um, I don't think you'd be able to keep uh, anything on the Clyde. I think any sort of shipbuilding, aircraft carriers, whatever it be in the future there will be a huge demand in the rest of the United Kingdom or what left, what would be left of it for that to be based in Portsmouth or Bristol or Newcastle or where. I mean, I just don't think you would remotely be in a situation where, where sort of a government, um, the remaining government in the United Kingdom would be politically able to continue investing in Scotland in that way. I think we would probably have to still pay uh, a fee to maintain the nuclear deterrent at Faz Lane. I don't see that moving. I just think the cost would be astronomical. And obviously it's a nice earner for the uh, for what would then be an independent Scottish government. Um, so yes, we'd like your thoughts on all of those issues. And uh, please feel free to respond. Please feel free to not use any kind of foul language because it's really sad. As uh, a good friend of mine from university once put it to me, they said, uh, swearing is lazy because generally you can actually find a better way to say it. Uh, so yes, would appreciate any thoughts, particularly Scots. Thank you.